Hey Pectus Warriors, it's Riley Bowen from FixPectus.com. In today's video, I want to talk about the symptoms of Pectus Excavatum. So obviously, Pectus Excavatum, there are two very clear visual symptoms, which is the sunken chest and flaring ribs. Okay, so it's very easy to identify for your Pectus Excavatum. If your sternum collapses or if your ribs are flaring as well, then you have Pectus, okay? But beyond the obvious visual symptoms, there are other symptoms of pectus excavatum that aren't often talked about. So firstly, pectus is a condition that varies greatly in terms of how severe it is, how symmetrical it is, so it comes in all shapes and sizes. And not only is there pectus excavatum, but there's also a carinatum where the chest goes out. There's also pectus arcuatum where it's a blend of both excavatum and carinatum in different areas of the chest. Um, so pectus does vary, but if you have a more severe or a deeper case of pectus excavatum, Often, as you can imagine, there's a collapse in the chest, okay? And so it's going in. And what's under there is your heart and your lungs. And so it can displace your heart. It can reduce the, the capacity at which your lung can function and expand properly. And so there's gonna be other effects that are associated with heart and lung function. Now the severer your pectus is, normally the more effects there are associated with that. But even in milder cases, there can be other symptoms associated with this, including mine. You might look at me and think, he doesn't have pectus. Where's his sunken chest? Where's his flaring ribs? If you look at my younger photos, it's very clear. Now there are lots of approaches to fixing pectus such as surgery and things but I went down and exercised as a route and building muscle to mask it and, and improving my posture as well and so I've been able to make it look hardly noticeable and really combat my rib flare without an oblique development combat my sunken chest by developing my pecs so the visual symptoms for me are no longer as apparent as well as these other symptoms which you can improve again it does depend though on the severity so the symptoms that can be associated with your pectus and ones that I experienced myself as well were a decreased exercise tolerance. So just basically getting tired sooner, okay? Sooner than your peers. You might run out of breath, or you might get early onset of shortness of breath, or you might have exercise-induced asthma, or coughing or wheezing that's very easily induced from exercise, or a rapid heart rate. This is very common because obviously, the heart or lungs are gonna be displaced often with pectus. And so the deeper it is, these symptoms will be accentuated even more. Okay, and so it is very, very common to have heart palpitations, heart murmurs, and just in general, a hard time with exercise. Also chest pain is common as well. So if you are experiencing these symptoms, you're not alone. It is often probably related to your pectus excavator. So what do we do about these symptoms? Well, as I said before, there are approaches. For me, I went down the approach of just utilizing exercise and training to improve the cosmetic um, symptoms of pectus, so how I look. And then in terms of improving like my early onset of shortness of breath, my exercise induced asthma, my decrease in exercise tolerance, I trained it. You know, I did cardio. I always talk about cardio and its importance, and I've been able to drastically improve that to the point where I am fitter than my peers without pectus excavated now. So you can still definitely build that up. But as I said, it does vary. It depends on the severity of your pectus, these symptoms, and then your approaches to fixing it. If you have a very, very severe case, surgery can be a good option. It's definitely worth weighing up all the different options you have and dependent on the symptoms and the severity of your symptoms. If it's a health concern, then surgery is definitely probably your best avenue. If it's not a health concern, they're just mild symptoms like I had, uh, then I would really encourage you go through exercise and the exercise program tailored to your pectus to treat it. If you are interested, you can book a strategy call with me to help with that as well. So they're the main symptoms. Now it's important to note that pectus is a risk factor and is often correlated with other syndromes and conditions such as Marfan syndrome. With Marfan syndrome, high intensity exercise is not recommended. So it's very important you get your pectus checked out. Now, aside from the actual indent and the rib flare, there are some other kind of body deformities or body abnormalities that are common with people with pectus excavatum as well. Um, so for example, long fingers, long limbs, so very long arms and legs. Uh, very, which I have particularly arms and legs. My arm span is like two meters and I'm one meter 85 in height. Um, so, you know, that's meant to be one to one ratio. So that's very off for me and very common with people with pectus to have very long arms um, and legs. Also, scoliosis is very commonly associated with pectus as well as kyphosis. So if you look at the average person with pectus, I have scoliosis I'm to a mild degree. Um, kyphosis is very commonly associated as well. And this kyphosis, this rounding of the shoulders actually makes the pectus condition look a lot worse. So it's one of the things that I combat with my training. Um, so they're two postural positions that are very commonly associated with pectus. And beyond that, there are other things like, for example, for me, I have twisted hips and pigeon toes. So 
other like bone abnormalities is often associated with pectus. I often see people with pectus having a very winging scapula. Um, so yeah, you're not alone if you have pectus and you have these other symptoms, these other bone abnormalities. Okay, so no, it's good to you know understand the symptoms and all the different things that are associated with pectus, and then you can then once you identify what you have then the approaches to overcome and improve them. So there is plenty of room for growth, there's plenty of room for improvement, there's lots of avenues you can go down if you have pectus excavatum, carinatum, arcuatum, or any of these other um, conditions. Now this segues me to leading to the main symptom that I think is the, the worst thing when it comes to pectus excavatum, and that is the mental health symptom, the poor self-image and the, the lacking of confidence that one has when they have pectus excavatum. Now this is probably associated with almost every single case of pectus. And this mental health side of pectus is probably the biggest symptom of it um, in terms of taking the biggest toll on most of you. Um, even if it ranges from the mildest cases to the severest cases, all have a mental health element associated with it. And um, it's something that's important to work on. It's worth seeing a psychologist if it's getting you down. And again, it's one of the reasons it's important not to be a victim of the condition, but working on improving it. So anyway guys, I hope this video was helpful, getting some insight into the symptoms of pectus excavatum and the pectus conditions in general. And if you would like some help or guidance in terms of the strategy that may be best for you to overcome your condition, build confidence in yourself, then reach out to me. I recommend you go to my website, fixpectus.com, and you can book a strategy call with me so I can meet you, and then we can go from there. Thanks guys.